Hey, good morning and happy Aloha Friday. So I know uh, a lot of the uh, fall sports are getting into full swing and this summer has definitely been a hot one. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about dehydration and, uh, you know, getting plenty of water. And it's something that I see a lot in students as far as dehydration, and it's really pretty uh, preventable. And so, you know, I carry around a hydro flask and we do have water filling stations throughout the school. And we really encourage kids to drink water and to use a refillable um you know, uh, container for that. So, um, you know, there are, there is water of drinking fountains available and there is water that they can buy in the cafeteria and stuff like that, but it's really silly when it's, you know, free. And, um, I also, I have water bottles that I can give the kids. And so, um, I make those freely available. And so please encourage kids, um, to drink, uh, water, but, um, you know, the thing to remember about rehydration is, you know, symptoms to look for are, you know, headache, dizziness, feeling sleepy, tired, irritable. And that sounds like a middle school kid. And so sometimes it's hard to see, you know, what's happening. But, you know, when you sweat, you're not only losing water, you're losing important nutrients like sodium, potassium, and probably the biggest one is magnesium. And so I will oftentimes mix together a electrolyte solution, but you know, magnesium deficiency is probably something that we see a lot in kids because again, um, it's easy to overlook those symptoms just because we kind of write it off as just a kid being a kid. But, you know, things like, you know, irregular sleep patterns, hyperactivity, being irritable, you know, uh, you know, uh, feeling fatigued or anxiety, you know, these things can actually be um, traced back to a magnesium deficiency, which some com sometimes can be through diet, can be from, um, you know, overactivity and not being properly hydrated and all those kinds of things. And so, um, you know, I really encourage uh, making your own electrolyte solution. And I'll share my recipe um, that I use for that. Um, sometimes parents will just kind of grab a Gatorade and go with that. Um, the thing I don't like about Gatorade or other, um, you know, store bought electrolyte solutions is a lot of times they have a lot of sugar in them. And in fact, when you look at the nutritional value of a Gatorade, um, it actually has as much sugar as many, uh, you know, sodas and it's just not carbonated. And so sometimes people will think, well, that's healthy. Um, and it isn't always necessary. Uh, you know, when I was coaching cross country, what I would suggest is, you know, if you're going to go the Gatorade route or the, you know, little packets that you can put in uh, water, uh, go at those 50-50, um, meaning you might buy a Gatorade and then get a water and mix the two. So you're diluting it a little bit, but um, you're not getting, you're getting half the sugar. Um, there are also zero sugar alternatives, but a lot of times those have other additives which can cause problems downstream. And so just go with water. And if you want to, you know, if you feel like you need to add a little electrolytes to it, you know, if they've been working out for two hours or more, that's when the electrolytes come into to play. Um, you know, just throw some sea salt in there, you know, make sure that it's a um, good sea salt and that it has a lot of those trace minerals like sodium, potassium, magnesium, and those types of things. Um, and it's a lot easier on the budget and, um, you know, is, is something that is really, uh, good and recommended. As far as what's happening in science, uh, this week, um, we're going to, we're just finishing up some stuff with experimental design. And then next week we're going to go into, um, you know, doing some more with graphing. So analyzing data and continuing to practice our measurements with, um, length area volume and then mass and weight. And then we'll start, you know, applying those with looking at density, buoyancy, and some other types of things uh, there in science. 
in biology, we're actually finishing up stuff with the chemistry re review and our first test will be on Monday. So those kids are getting a review sheet today. I'll probably send out the key for that review sheet uh, uh, Saturday or Sunday of this week. So they'll get it this weekend. Um, I'm doing a review session before school on Monday. So if any kids want to come in before school, any biology kids, or come and see me during Connect, we will do a review uh, before our first quiz on uh, Monday. And then we'll start into biological macromolecules, looking at carbon-based compounds and, um, you know, moving on from there. So um, it's been a fantastic week. Um, you know, we have done NWE, NWEA testing, which can be a bit of a drag, but, um, you know, been, other than that, it's been super fantastic. I am going to, I think I forgot to put my link to the Google Photos album in the um, post from last week. So I'm going to drop it in here again. And just remember, I deeply appreciate everything you guys do as parents and caregivers to support the learning that happens in my classroom. Um, you know, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and, and read this information and uh, know that that is really valued and appreciated. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend.